Hello and welcome to my Emacs conference lightning talk. Today I'll be talking about my journey into Emacs as a high schooler and how it has changed my life. Right, so who am I? I am a senior at Stanford Online High School and I am also a violinist. Uh, I started violin when I was two and a half and I have been uh, keeping it up ever since. Violin is a huge part of my life and I am very much a musician at heart. I am also a somewhat capable programmer. Um, I've done a lot of informal programming in the past, uh, and this year I'm taking my uh, first AP Comp Sci course in my high school. And so I've done a lot of side projects, mainly in Python, um, and some very short scripts in Elisp. Um, and last but not least, I am a tinker. I love to play around with things and see what I can do better and just have as much fun as possible. So how did I find Emacs? I discovered it actually through a talk, funnily enough, at a Vim conference uh, given by Aaron Bieber um, titled Evil Mode or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love Emacs. I watched that talk a couple times over, just marveling at all the wonderful things that he could do in Emacs. Uh, and being a previous Vim user myself, I found it very enticing to be able to have the evil mode package and very quickly switch to Emacs. At the time, I was also in my sophomore year. And so I had had sort of a note-taking system in the past, but it was not good. Um, and I needed a more organized note-taking system. My parents had suggested paper for a while, and there was the whole organization part of that, uh, but that did not really work out for me. And so I was trying to find this better note-taking system, and it was very hard. Uh, I had two main criteria, which I did not define at the time, but I realized was really what I was looking for. First of all, it had to be flexible enough. And second of all, it had, I had to have control over the data. And so through this process, I actually went through a bunch of note-taking softwares rather systematically. I went through Google Docs, uh, which very much did not work out. Um, I also went through Evernote, which also was not great for me. Um, and OneNote, which I settled on for a little while. Uh, but it did not meet these criteria, um, particularly the second one. I had taken some notes and I wanted to export it and OneNote did not let me do that. Uh, it was PDF, horribly organized PDF, and that's when I knew I needed some change. So I discovered Emacs through this talk and through the wonderful features of org mode. This is my first journal entry in Emacs. I had been playing with it for one day, and I was on the org agenda, and I happened to press I, which for the Emacs keybind is the default for diary entry. And so I was very excited, um, and I shouldn't stay on this slide too long lest you read it. Um, so <laughs> let's move on to the next one. Um, so the learning curve for me, I think particularly being an XVim user, um, evil mode made it very easy to switch. Thankfully, I there was the Emacs reference sheet and having evil mode to switch between um, texts and whether it be editing a text file or going to other parts of just Emacs in general, I think Vim really helped with making me feel comfortable within this new environment. And so having that experience, I also wasn't new to the keybind based world. I have been very comfortable with the computer and the keyboard for most of my life. Um, and so it was not a totally new environment for me. Um, I also spent a lot of time looking at the Emacs reference sheet, just thinking about uh, trying to find all of the different functions. If I didn't know what something was, then I queried it in Emacs, and then I figured out what it was. 
Um, and that was one of the best ways for me to discover um, all of the capabilities of Emacs. Thirdly, of course, the self-documenting feature um, or nature of Emacs and narrowing frameworks such as Helm really helped uh, find things, especially for MX. For a while, I was just, <laughs> I would go about my day and if I pressed a keybind that I didn't know what it did, uh, I would do the lossage and see the list of keybinds that I had pressed and tried to find that one and query the function and whatnot. So, yeah. And now we jump to now. So there, <laughs> there is at least one moment in each day when I think, how would I live without Emacs? Uh, particularly now during my senior year in high school, things are very busy with school, violin, and other side projects. It's pretty crazy. And so Emacs and org mode has really helped me stay on track with everything. And the flexibility of these softwares, being able to have things in different files, notes within the tasks, all of that stuff has been uh, truly a lifesaver. And so I think I can confidently say that I have found Emacs to be the perfect software for me. Um, over the past two years of using Emacs, um, now it is about two years and two months, uh, I have built a fairly well-organized uh, 2000 plus line uh, org literate config. And so I actually, I started with an Elisp config uh, just the vanilla Emacs with evil mode, and I built it up from there. Eventually, I switched to org literate configs um, and used that to organize the snippets that I was putting in there. And so, yeah, this is really my workflow now. Um, currently, about 90% of everything I do on my computer is in Emacs. The most notable things, of course, the list is far too long to put on one slide. Uh, but I do a lot of my programming in Emacs, mainly Python and Elisp. Um, because of my AP CompSci class, I have to do Java as well. And uh, thank goodness Emacs has wonderful support for that as well. Also, I do all of my school assignments, more or less in Emacs. Uh, essay writing, I do in org mode, and I have some template files um, template org files, which I just include at the top, and then I can export easily to LaTeX and a beautiful PDF. Uh, math, physics, same thing. LaTeX fragments are a lifesaver and also really pretty. <laughs> um, and I take notes on basically everything. Um, at first, I had things separate, and then I started sort of putting it all into one notes.org file, or most of it into one file. Uh, and that has actually worked out surprisingly well, especially with all the searching features of agenda and whatnot. Um, and I also use mail. I recently made the switch probably about one or two months ago, and it has been one of the best switches I've, I've ever had, uh, especially given connecting to tasks, all of this wonderful stuff. Um, just putting even more in Emacs uh, is always a good thing, I've found. So reflecting back on my journey, I think one of the most important things was just having a reason to use it. When I came to Emacs, I had something that I was looking for, and as soon as I found it, I delved right in and I, I started using it for that thing. And so I was sort of forced to take the time to read the docs and figure out what functions I needed to function and how I was going to put my workflow. Um, and also, of course, the desire to tinker. And yeah, so really what's next for me is uh, just wanting to become a more active member of the Emacs community. I want to give back, and I think this talk is sort of the first step to that, um, being a, a more active part of this community that has uh, indirectly, perhaps, um, but just like really helped me become a better and more organized human being. Um, I have some package ideas that I'm slowly working on and 
yeah, I just hope to spread the word. So thank you very much for listening to my lightning talk. If you'd like to contact me, here are three modes of, or two modes of communication. Uh, I will be on IRC more uh, soon, and you can always email me if you have any questions. Uh, you can also search me on YouTube, Pierce Wong Violin. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference.